All right, let's get started. Um, we'll, I'm going to do a quick introduction really quick here, and then we've got uh, three representatives from Bercata joining us today. We have uh, Ryan Walsh, we have Chase Schaff, and John Lawrence, who are all going to be available to us to present Bercata's exciting new technology to us today and answer any questions that you have. Uh, before that, we will uh, talk a little bit about ourselves very briefly. We have been in business 28 years. You can see from our map, we've done a lot of uh, a lot of work throughout kind of the whole Rocky Mountain region. Um, I'm that Lone Star up in Eastern Washington, and then we've got employees kind of stationed throughout Montana, Wyoming, and Utah as well. Uh, we have been partners with Bercata for <clears throat> about two years now, and uh, we are an authorized reseller, but we're also a preferred partner of theirs, meaning we have. Um, basically uh, done a certain amount of quantity, a significant amount of quantity selling Vercata within the area. So we have a very solid understanding of Vercata, of the products and solutions um, that they offer and uh, have implemented it throughout many different organizations throughout the region. So we are proud to partner with them. Um, their technology is amazing as I'm sure they will uh, they will show you here in a second. So we, we specialize in solving uh, complex problems. So we, we can do procurement, we can provide you the, the products you might need, but we also really, our bread and butter is understanding your environment, understanding what bottlenecks you might have or pain points you might have within your network um, and helping you address those with technology. So that's where we really flourish as a value added reseller. So you can see there are products and services, you know, we have quite a variety. Today we're talking about physical security um, but we do offer quite a few other products or services. If you're interested, you can visit pinecc.com to learn more. Um, and we are excited to be recognized most recently as a top 500 um, MSP in, in the United States by CRN, which is a reputable third party vendor. So we're excited, we're growing, um, and we're excited to uh, grow with Vercata as they're growing as well and present to you what we're all here for today, which is Vercata's new alarm and 24 seven professional monitoring solution. So they're going to walk through, give you some background, help you understand, you know, what the purpose of this product is and how it can benefit you and kind of give you a deep dive into what it looks like um, and, and demonstrate it. So like I said at the beginning, we will be sending out a recording of this. Um, it's programmed to send tomorrow morning. And so if you want to review anything, um, you know, feel like you don't have to take super detailed notes because you'll be able to have access to that. And then questions, is, if you have questions, please ask them in the chat or questions function on the GoToWebinar sidebar, um, and we will respond to those throughout the webinar. Um, and if you have questions after, you can reply to our follow-up email, which will go out tomorrow. Um, quick, I'm done. I'm going to hand it off to the Ricotta team, who's going to... Uh, walk you through what we're all here for today. So once again, thank you all for coming and Ricotta, the floor is yours. Thanks, Chase, appreciate it. Beautiful, beautiful. No, I appreciate that. So guys, uh, Ryan and myself are gonna take over the webinar from here. Uh, I'm actually in the office. We just came back in June 15th. So if you see people walking around, you know, the world is getting back to normal, which is always fun. Uh, I've ran a couple of the company facing webinars with Vercada in regards to our public webinars. We have them every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So if you ever want follow-ups on specific things, the mobile app, access control, uh, alarms, which we'll dive into today, Ryan and myself, as well as just the general, the generalized suite, which, you know, this is specific to Pine Cove, absolutely check out vercata.com. Uh, again, anything you need, let us know. I am in charge of all SLED accounts in Montana, Wyoming, and as well as Idaho. So, you know, would love to talk with all of you. Ryan is the same, but with corporation accounts, so private accounts. But welcome, guys. Really appreciate this. And I'm seeing here you guys can see my screen, so I'll just jump right in. A couple of quick slides, then I'll jump into the mobile demo. And then we'll have Ryan go over the rest of our command suite on Google Chrome. Uh, so really quickly here, guys, about Vercada. We're the fastest growing physical security company in the world right now. We're based here in San Mateo, California, where I am. Ryan, of course, is in Salt Lake City, so a bit closer, as well as that we have offices in Austin, Texas, London, England, and Sydney, Australia. So now we're deployed worldwide. It's helping with services as well when it comes to the fact that we can assist you in any time zone. And most importantly, 
were invested in from the beginning with Maritech, Sequoia, Siemens, some of the biggest names in venture capitalist finance. We secured our Series C a year and a half ago for 80 million, being valued at 1.6 billion. We were one of the few Silicon Valley companies to actually grow over 200% during COVID. And you'll see that's mostly because of our remote viewing capabilities and how everyone, even with despite COVID, wanted the ability to see everything from their phone, from their computers at home with no additional hardware or software required, no more VPNing in, but still being just as secure. We accomplished this because our team, our founding team was from Stanford and MIT. They started with a computer science background and built an application first and foremost, secure and easy to use knowing that the video management software suites of the world haven't really been updated since the mid to late 80s. So now again, fast forward to 2015, they're building out the platform and then built the hardware to accompany that software. Their goal was to create a modern enterprise physical security system. And you'll see here from Verkata Command, which Ryan and I will show you, we have access control, intrusion detection, environmental sensors, and video security, all web-based, all utilized through the cloud, as well as through our phones. Again, in the near future, we have lighting, HVAC, and again, any AV technologies required, including even PA systems to create that smart school, that smart building, or that smart city. And again, that's the vision, to be secure, to be scalable, uh, ready for AI applications, searching abilities, 24-7 monitoring, and obviously, most importantly, live notifications. Now, a lot of you laugh at this slide. I'll be quick. Some of you are principals or IT directors or don't know much about cameras. That's fine. Neither did I before joining here a little less than a year ago. And here we have the traditional IP or digital cameras plugged in through some sort of cat cabling or even coax, if you guys are old school, into a PoE switch. From there, it's going into an NVR or DVR and then into a local CCTV monitor or PC with specific software downloaded on there. And let's say because of COVID you wanted remote viewing, you may have to attach a router or a hub, external services, more terabytes and whatnot, and then forward an open port using something like maybe, you know, port 6160 uh, to actually go ahead and then allow for inbound traffic on your network. If this is going over your head. All that means is that there's potential security risks to doing that, which is why you have to VPN in. And if you do that, again, you're kind of getting around the system, but I don't really know how to use a VPN well, and we wanted to secure an easier way to do that. Similarly, you'll still have a lot of latency issues, or even then allowing for inbound traffic does allow your network to be open to a certain degree to potential risks and problems. And right now we're seeing from studies with Symantec and Forrester, top IT firms around the United States, that over 18% of IoT hacks go through the NVR DVR system. And this is a problem because they're not really looking at your camera footage, but they're just trying to gain access to the more important information into your network. And from the ground up for Kata, we wanted to fix that. Not only that, we wanted to fix the amount of hardware even needed for security systems because this in and of itself is bulky, expensive, and pretty hard to maintain. Same thing goes for access control and alarms. Again, you have a master control, you have a master panel. It'll tie it into its own dedicated server, its own local PC with the same exact issues therein when it comes to remote viewing, getting a remote alarm, or most importantly, just having to manage your door system even. Right, whether it comes to unlocking doors remotely or adding or deleting a user, even from alarms, we wanted to make this all simple enough to do from your phone, no VPNs required. This required a total overhaul of the cloud system here or of the even hard system, uh, which again, we're kind of fixing here completely. So the left, you'll see cameras, alarms, and our sensors. We have that ecosystem of hybrid cloud devices. And it's hybrid cloud because it offers two different suites. The first is the on-premises side, and I'll start with that. What I mean by on-premises is that our solution is still on-premises. We have a solid state drive built into the camera, alarm panel, sensor, and access door controller. It goes anywhere from 30, to a, 30 days to 365 days of onboard retention. Again, that's the solid state drive in our technology. That's where all the data is being housed. It's your data, it's not ours. We use people searching, not people databases. It's all your data on your premises. Everything's built in with an accelerometer for tamper resistance and detection, as well as our cameras and any external software has an IK10 or IP67 rating for weatherproofing, for external use, and obviously, again, for any kind of tamper resistance there as well. The same accelerometers as your phone. Now, on that on-premises side, you're getting the security on-site, as well as maintenance built in to where all firmware and software updates are going to be built into the cost, all pushed through the cloud. 
The cloud's being used as a doorway here, and there's no different memberships. There's no monthly or annual fee. It works on a license that's a minimum of three years. And beyond that, what you're looking here at, guys, is the ability to then have everything mostly automated for you. So more of a set it and forget it system. I'm dealing with IT teams in Wyoming for cities and schools that are two people large. You can't really update 100 cameras with two people. It take all month. So we wanted to make sure everything was automatic and the firmware was included. And again, that monitoring from everywhere was actually going to come in it at no additional cost, all standard. What this means here is that the cloud portion of our offering is going to be just a doorway for you to access that footage that's being stored on board to our devices. And we also do offer cloud backup and cloud storage if you choose. Again, you don't have to, but if you choose to then save information to the cloud, if not, you can just download anything as a traditional MP4 and email it out directly through Google Drives. Our mobile app's five-star rated. And again, it's really important to note from a security perspective that we are encrypted at rest and at transit at AES-128 using TLS 1.2, only using HTTPS, the secure version of the internet. And most important, guys, we only use port 80. This is going to be important because we do not allow any inbound connections. It's outbound only just to use the hybrid cloud. Now, from there, people are also concerned about our scaling. It's very easy to scale. All we require is a PoE switch with Cat5 or Cat6 cabling. So we are only limited by the amount of open ports you have and your switches. And from there, it's only 20 kilobits a second at rest with even our 4K streams going up to only 1.5 megabits a second equal to watching a YouTube video. Again, we wanna make sure there's no limitations. We even have a school in Florida that's now up to 4,000 active cameras on one network. So again, totally possible to scale. Same thing goes into all of our technology here. And you'll notice this top arrow that's local mode. So you can only activate that if you only want local viewing on the same network. But even then our bandwidth goes even lower than again, a megabit a second, because at that point you're on the same internet as the camera and it completely subverts the cloud there and doesn't blow up your network. Again, we're trusted by industry leaders with over 7,000 organizations, 39 Fortune 500 companies, 3,000 resellers. Pine Cove is only one of them, but right now they're rated as one of our top 10 resellers. So we definitely trust these guys. We're about to hit our three-year anniversary with them. I should have worn my Pine Cove collar. But you'll see here Okta Square, Equinox, Tesla, all these huge names when it comes to actually working with big companies and passing their cybersecurity tests. Similarly, we're in seven different Wyoming districts, five of which are Fremont districts, another couple in Sheridan, as well as in Montana or Wyoming. But reach out to myself here for Idaho, for Ryan, for corporate customers. We'll find a reference for you local to the area, and we'll absolutely do our best to make that work. For now, I would open up to questions, but again, just wanted to make sure it's very simple that you're understanding. And most importantly here, when it comes to our licensing, which again is standard for any kind of cloud usage. We have the hardware and the license. There's no hidden costs. There's a 10 year warranty built in. And with Verkata Next Day RMAs direct from the manufacturer, that's us. It comes with Pine Cove's obvious maintenance, but we don't require barely any maintenance besides installation. So you'll have our technical support, maintenance software, firmware updates, all built into the cost, unlimited users, as well as Ryan and myself as onboard sales representatives and solutions engineers, either Jonathan, who's on this call today, or another gentleman named Connor, depending on your state. And this is the beginning of your Verkata ecosystem. So whether it's five, six, seven, eight cameras or another couple of doors, it's going to be able to build in that smart building architecture that we want to focus on in the future. Now, before I continue forward though and toss it over to Ryan, I just wanted to show you guys here that I'm on my iPhone. Ryan will show you the Google Chrome version of what we do. But our five-star rated mobile app on iPhone and Android, again, you'll see the trains going by right now, 9.14 a.m. Pacific time. This is live. You'll see here, I'm able to jump on the bottom here by tapping on my screen. Very simple, easy to use UI. I can even switch it over to our map where I can see a couple cameras up in Berkeley, zoom into where they are, or even go into our integrated floor plan where I can see here multiple different camera feeds by tapping on the bottom area and even looking up and zooming in on certain areas. So during a lockdown event, we can trigger this into motion detection. And you could say, let's see, you know, again, we don't want anyone coming down that middle hallway we can actually view and check for motion here. And what's important to know is you can directly share this via your Verkata contacts or create a link. And what's important to know here, guys, is especially during lockdown scenarios, motion detection, or even people heat maps, Ryan will show you how you can effectively use these even to clean your areas better. You'll see all of our notifications here show up pretty simply on our phone, like an Instagram feed, whether it's motion detection, people of interest, 
I don't want to steal Ryan's thunder, but you can also look at archive footage here, saved footage, share it from our phones directly, or even look directly at our cameras. We have five offline, 61 online. I can look at notable events and very easily see here, okay, can I jump into London exterior? Absolutely. And I can jump into that feed of even London from my phone here in San Mateo. Final thing here to show you guys is that you are allowed to run searches. We can do searches via people or even upload a photo. I have a photo uploaded of our coworker here, Kyrie. And you'll see here, I can mark him as a person of interest. I can search all cameras, which I'm doing currently. And I'm actually able to then scroll back and look at Kyrie across multiple weeks of footage, click in directly, and show you even one of our 360 views to where there's Kyrie right here. Again, my camera's and my phone is sideways, so it's taking a second to calibrate. And now it's jumping with date and time to every single footage where Kyrie is. I can skip forward into multiple footages, go back a couple, replay the one I just watched. There's Kyrie again. So again, not to steal too much from Ryan's thunder here, screenshot, go frame by frame, or most importantly, just do everything I need from our phone. And we find right now about 60% of our customers are using their phone to do this. Works best on Wi-Fi, but as long as you have a 4G connection, again, everything's gonna come through below one and a half megabits a second, but we wanna make it simple and easy to use. That being said, uh, Ryan, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the presentation here. And I hope there's questions, guys, but I'll talk to you guys at the end and Ryan will take over. Great. Thank you, Chase. All right, just confirming, you can see my screen here. Yep, yeah, all good to go. Great, sounds good. All right, so everyone, thank you for joining today. My name is Ryan Walsh. I cover the corporate accounts for Montana and Wyoming here at Verkata. I'm running through today our web-based platform. So a couple things to note here. I signed in via two-factor authentication with Okta, just a little plug-in on the top-hand corner. Um, but we do also tie into most two-factor authentication schemes that you might have uh, currently with your, within your organization. A um, couple things to note here. This is our Verkata landing page for our cameras. From here, we can scroll to access control, environmental sensors, and most recently, our alarm tab. Uh, we can also manage the different sites that we want to go and scroll through here with this drop down button on the top left hand corner. Uh, as Chase was alluding to, we do have a Google Maps feature built in. This allows us to jump into 100,000 view of all of our cameras across the world, see what's online and see what's functioning. Now, if I wanted to jump into the Bay Area here, I'm going to delve into our HQ and I can see that I have 48 cameras, 47 of which are online and functioning lit up in green. Um, as Chase alluded to as well, these cameras do have accelerometers and uh, what we call occlusion alerts built into them. So if someone were to try to tamper with the camera or spray paint the camera, you would get a notification in real time that these cameras have gone down and that they're being alerted upon. Um, we also do have the ability to integrate with floor plans. So um, from here, you know, as we saw with the mobile app, we could click in through different cameras. We could see live motion throughout our facilities. But we also have the ability to do is look through uh, motion historically throughout our organization. So if I want to understand when people are moving the most or where they're moving the most for a certain interval of time, it's as easy as going ahead and clicking that, you know, knowing where we need to focus for, let's say, our disinfecting efforts or where we want to um, go ahead and put items that uh, we want to sell for retail stores. That was a direct result of COVID. It was a feature that was requested by our customer base. Um, so we went ahead and built that out for them. Jumping into one of our live feeds here at the front of HQ, uh, a couple important things to note. We are looking at a, a live feed um, of uh, Verkata's HQ. Now, traditionally speaking with the system, if you want to go ahead and look through footage, you need to know either the date and time, um, if you're lucky. If you don't, you're scrolling through hours and hours of MVR-based footage to find what you need to do. With Verkata, we make it easy to scroll through up to 24 hours of footage just with the scroll of our mouse. At the bottom, we can see the creation of binding boxes that indicates a person or vehicle coming into line the side of the camera. If I want to take this and turn it into a more digestible clip, I can break it out into four hour increments. I can see heat, heat maps to see where people and vehicles are moving the most throughout the line of side of the camera. But even this can take you a considerable amount of time. So I'm going to pose a hypothetical here to you. Let's say we want to see when this bike was stolen. Um, what I can do is select the area within the camera that I want to be notified on filter for people, and then every single time a person crosses that box that I've created, uh, it's going to show me that instance right here. If we want to take it a step further, we don't know where something happened, but we know what the person looked like. Uh, let's say we want to filter for people who are wearing red and appear to be male. I can go ahead, I can apply these filters, and then see every single instance across this camera where a person who matches that description has been picked up. If I want to go ahead and search all cameras, I can click search all cameras to view all cameras in our organization. But if I wanted to take it a step further, you know, like Chase was alluding to previously, apologize, I need to jump out here real quick. Uh, if I wanna go ahead and search for a photo of an individual, 
I can take that photo from my desktop, upload it here, and it's gonna show me every instance across the organization where this person has been picked up. From here, we can also go ahead and create person of interest notifications, uh, like Chase mentioned before, allowing us to be proactive with the people who are coming in and out of our facility. Now, one important thing to note is that we can also do the same thing for vehicles as it pertains to search that we can with people. So if I want to go ahead and filter by red cars that come within a line side of the camera, uh, I can apply these filters here and it's gonna pick up every instance of that happening. Now, jumping into one of these photos, uh, you know, like Chase mentioned as well, we can go ahead and add in multiple cameras for different contexts. All of our cameras come equipped with 10X digital zoom, so have the ability to see up to 250 feet away. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hypothetically archive this clip. So what this will do is then pull this, the footage off of the solid state storage drive in the camera and store it up in the cloud for an indefinite period of time. From here, we can select our time range that we wanna store, we could add in notes, we could share with the organization, or we could blur faces if we so choose. When we do that, it's gonna take it to our archive bucket here. Um, and now a couple important things to note about all of our archive clips is that in the top left hand corner, they are watermarked. So they are fully admissible in court, fully admissible for any evidentiary purposes you may need. Now, if we want to go ahead and add tags for different types of events, we can filter by these tags as well. So if we want to call this a theft or a car accident or whatever, it, whatever you so choose, we can add that tag to the video and then filter in the archive bucket. We could add in running notes as the video plays on for our own you know, documentation purposes, or we could go ahead and download this as an MP4 and actually burn it onto USB to physically hand it to somebody. Traditionally speaking, with you know, a non-cloud-based solution, this is what you need to do. You need to go to your actual NVR or your PC, you need to put it in a USB, you need to physically hand it to the police. What we can do with Verkata is we can share a live link via SMS, email, or, or I'm sorry, an archive link via SMS, email, or a copy and pasted link set for a certain period of time. Uh, and it's as easy as going ahead and adding in someone's first name, last name, and their phone number to this clip. Taking that access away would be as easy as clicking the trash button that would appear next to their name, automatically revoking their access to that footage. One other thing that's important to know about Verkata as it pertains to the link sharing, we can also share live links of video. So if you wanted to get a live link out to somebody in the case of an emergency, or let's say you wanted to multiplex this and embed this link on your website, we've had up to 10,000 users viewing footage concurrently with no effect on bandwidth whatsoever. Now on the access control portion here, a uh, couple important things to note is that our, you know, we do have a natively integrated solution, meaning that we tie in camera and door-based events into one platform. From here, I can remotely lock and unlock all of our doors and can see all the events that are happening down below. We could go ahead and filter for types of events. So if I wanna see when the door has been held open, I can go and see these events here as well. We can also see when the door is most active, knowing when people are coming in and out. We could also set schedules remotely. And what this will do is automatically provision those doors on the schedule you set without any manual um, action needed to be taken. So if I wanted to make this door lock 24 seven, very easy to do. Um, and then I can go ahead and add in exceptions where uh, these doors are locked. Editing it would be as simple as dragging and dropping it if we so choose. And then, you know, as far as the administrative side of this, if getting these cameras and doors natively integrated is as easy as clicking, adding a camera, choosing the camera that you wanna be associated with the door and then seeing those instances play out in real time. Um, a couple important things to note about our access control is that we do integrate with not, about 95% of HID readers on the market. We do have a proprietary ODSP reader uh, that we manufacture and provide. It is Bluetooth enabled and we do have geofencing as well in beta, something that we could enable for you guys if you do decide to go uh, the Verkata route. Environmental sensors, again, the name of the game here is integrating everything and giving you a visual of what's going on. We measure up to eight different things with these sensors. We measure humidity, temperature, whether or not there has been motion detected, um, noise level, so you know, maintaining OSHA compliance in factories and hospitals has been huge for us. Uh, particulate matter in the atmosphere, again, a built-in accelerometer to see where they're being tampered with. Total volatile organic compounds, so essentially everything that is carcinogenic in the atmosphere. Overall AQI, which actually played a big role in our facilities maintenance during the wildfires last year. Uh, and then a vape and smoke index. So I know it just says vape index, but we also can measure cigarette smoke and it has been extremely useful in school bathrooms. Uh, as unfortunate as that is, uh, that's one of the things we've been doing here at Verkata. From here, we can also set alerts. This is as easy as picking the range that we want to be alerted on and then selecting the user that we want to notify when a certain uh, parameter gets set out of whack, if you will. 
And last but not least, we have Verkata Alarms natively integrated into our alarm platform. So a little bit about this. This was the most recent product release from Verkata. Um, this was released about two weeks ago. And you know the overall theme here is that we have a 24 seven managed service now um, that requires pretty much nothing more than a camera and an alarm license to be activated. But we do also have an alarm panel that we have released as well as an alarm console just kind of looking at what this what would happen here so in this instance um, one of the cameras alerted on a person coming into line of sight of the camera a video verification link live link was sent to our 24 7 managed service providers they saw that hey this doesn't seem to be an event that we want going on in our facility they notified gary lee who's a point of contact via sms or email um, they started the emergency dispatch confirmation call to him and then he resolved this because we did not want the police coming over to uh, Verkata's hq uh, so we did raise that alarm but had he not done that had he said go ahead give the police a call um, the police would have been sent en route um, and we would have noticed that it actually was uh, you know, an event that we needed to um, resolve in real time. From here, we can also hit the digital panic button. Essentially, this would start an alarm immediately uh, and notify our alarm center to go ahead and call the police. A couple important things to note here. Uh, we do have different trigger-based events for our alarm system. So we can alert on camera motion. Um, so if we would select an area in a certain time that we want to be notified on, we could do that here. By default, all of our alarm inputs will trigger an alarm. So we have up to 32 inputs for each alarm panel. This includes door forced open sensors, glass break sensors, water flow alarms, motion sensors, all of that natively integrated. And we do integrate with most third party uh, triggers as well. We can filter uh, different door events for alarms. So if we want a door held open or a door forced open to trigger an alarm, we can do that as well. And then as far as our sensors go, if we want to trigger on motion, we can do that as well. Here is where we would select the video verification. So essentially what video verification does and why this is so transformative to the industry is that this eliminates false alarms. We had a uh, customer over a six month period who beta tested our alarm panel across 42 different stores. They ended up saving $150,000 in false alarm fees and reduced their false alarms from up to five a month per site down to zero across their entire organization. From here, we can select what type of security we want. So security this essentially saying all right we're going to take it a little a, a step back uh, when we're activating alarms and max security is essentially saying we're going to go ahead and raise an alarm when anything happens within the line of sight of any of our uh, devices here here's where we'd enable emergency dispatch we can choose how many seconds we want to delay until that emergency dispatch and if we wanted to go ahead and test it so the police don't get called we could enter Verkata test mode here here is where we determine who gets notified and in what sequential order. It's as easy as searching a user and adding them in. So hypothetically, if Gary doesn't answer his SMS email and the call placed by our monitoring service, they would go down the line until they uh, reach the bottom of the list that we've created here. From here, this is where we'd manage all of our inputs and outputs, very straightforward, and we'd be happy to configure that on the Verkata side for you, should you decide to go this route. Uh, and then an alarm side as well, this is where we would go ahead and manage our different um, times that we want the, the alarm zone to be armed, and this is site specific. So if you want one site to be armed for a certain hour, um, very doable. If you want another site to be armed for a different hour, we can go ahead and configure those actions here. And then a couple things just on the administrative side. So Verkata, Chase mentioned before, we do have unlimited users and groups. Um, essentially what this does is allows us to automatically provision uh, users based on what group they're in for both camera, access control, and alarm permission sets. So if we want someone who is in our campus PD group to go ahead and have you know, full access to all of our doors, giving them that access would be just as easy as adding a person to that group. And we can get as granular as we want with that access, automatically provisioning people when you know we do add them. And then on the flip side of that, automatically deprovisioning someone in the case of a termination or a separation, um, ensuring that they no longer have access to your facilities in real time. Now on the bottom left, we have our what's new tab. So this will show us everything that's gone on uh, with Verkata and Verkata updates. As Chase mentioned again, you know we do have automatic firmware updates. So you can see here everything that has gone on in the past 12 months. But going back here, uh, I'm gonna jump into the help chat real quick. And I do wanna highlight that this is the real reason why people buy Verkata. It might seem a bit obscure, uh, but you know, like, like Chase, 
did talk about before, 95% of our issues can be resolved remotely via a firmware push by one of our in-house support specialists in San Mateo. Now, if it truly is a hardware issue, if it's something that we can't rectify remotely, all of our products have a 10-year warranty. We will drop ship you a new one, ensuring that you're covered for that 10-year period of time. This saves you money on total cost of ownership of your system. You can compare that to most of our nearest competitors. It's about a 2x uh, warranty that they have. Um, and with the most traditional NVR or DVR based systems, you're replacing that NVR every three to five years and cameras as well. So the name of the game with Verkata, the reason CFOs love us is because we are saving money over that 10 year period of time and making it super easy for IT teams to manage their product. And that's about all I have from the demo side. Would love to take some questions from you all. Uh, I know I just threw a lot at you. So anything that you might have, let's hear it. Yeah, I'm happy to field some questions. Everyone, feel free to to submit those questions if you have them in the questions tab or the chat tab, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll get started on them. We have one coming in here. Um, so, if we are looking for just motion detection for the alarm, could we use the camera for that and not the sensor? Yes, you could. As long as it's within the field of view of the camera, you definitely could do that. Okay. Cool. Uh, right now, that's the only question we have. If anyone else has any has any more questions, we're happy to stick around for a little bit. Feel free to to get those um, submitted. Oh, one more question came in. Uh, what is the backup for the cameras? So all of our cameras have the ability to enable a 30-day cloud backup. Um, Sorry, Jesus slacking me. Yes. Um, so all of our cameras, we can do a 30 day cloud backup that automatically backs everything up to the cloud. Um, but, you know, like we said, in the, in the case that uh, a camera was to be stolen, it would start to bulk upload that footage to the cloud, ensuring that you get most things up until that point of occlusion. OK, cool. Uh, was that you, Ryan, under the mask in there trying to get in that safe? No, that was Gary. I wish. <laughs> Uh, let's see one more. Um, what's the backup solution if the internet goes down at the facility? Yes. Um, so essentially what happens is that these cameras are going to be recording as long as they're power. They don't need internet connectivity in order to record. If you are, you know, using it over the local area network, you should still have that live viewing capability. Now, as soon as the internet is reconnected, that's when you'd be able to access that footage via Verkata command. Um, you wouldn't be able to access it while the internet is down, but it would save that footage the same, um, you know, in any other instance. And that works for both the um, cameras and the alarm system, everything? Yep. So our alarm system, if the internet was to go down, would default to the last configured setting. Um, so again, as long as there's power in the facility, everything in the Verkata suite would work as it was designed to. Um, we also do have battery backups available for all of our product suite. Okay. Another one came in. Is there an easy way to add people from an existing system, um, maybe via API or Active Directory? Yep. So we do integrate with most Active Directories on the market. So if you wanted to go ahead and upload that, um, that is definitely something we can do and something we've done at Mass and at Scales for groups like United Health Group. Okay. Great. Um, if the cameras do go down, uh, or or not the cameras, if the internet goes down, um, is it does the system notify that that has been backed up, uh, notify the users that the camera footage has been backed up? So, John, are you still on here? Yes, I am. I'd be happy to answer that question. Thank you. Yep. So for all Verkata products, if internet goes off, you will receive a notification, whether it be to your email, to your phone, and by default, always in the Verkata command system, notifying you that it has gone offline and that it's currently running on the existing configuration. For cameras, they may be storing locally until a connection is established. Access control uh, will also be storing events locally. And for alarms, what will actually happen is if internet is cut off to a site that is armed, it will automatically reach out to that monitoring agent to review the most recent footage received to confirm that the internet outage was not due to a nefarious act or an intrusion event. Um, so all of our products have some means of notifying you and responding. Um, in case of an outage. Great. Thank you. Okay. We haven't gotten any more in. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, another one came in. 
do you integrate with Engage door access control systems? John, I'm gonna let you take that one as well. Could probably explain better than I could. Yeah, so we integrate with the majority of other uh, access control hardware out there. In terms of integrating with other dashboards, uh, that's not something we currently offer at the time. So hardware integration between other systems, yes. Software integrations with other dashboards, uh, not at the moment. So essentially what that would mean is that we would replace a uh, Verkata door controller with your current existing door controller and then the inputs that you already have um, configured to your doors we could use and then tie in natively to Verkata command. Okay. Uh, if anyone else has, has any more questions, keep them coming. But if anyone does have any that they think of later or maybe after they watch the recording, you can reply to the email um, that I'll send tomorrow as a follow-up or you can always email sales at pinecc.com and we'll be in touch with you as soon as possible to get that question answered. If you want to you know, have a more personalized demo or wanna sit down with a Pinecove um, and or Verkata engineer to kind of walk through some of the things we talked through today and have specific questions to your environment, we're happy to do that as well. Once again, just to reply to that email um, or email sales at pinecc.com and we will set that up. Uh, thanks everyone for attending and thank you so much Verkata. This is exciting stuff. Uh, Verkata platform seems to be just growing and growing every day and, and it's cool to see this new product come out. We're excited to introduce it to some of our customers. So thank you for your time and thank you all for attending. We'll see you next time. Thank you for your partnership, Jace. It's been a pleasure, everybody. Have a good one.